Hello. Um, I am going to try and do a job that I've never done before and it's a bit tricky so I'm not going to take a lot of time to set cameras up and things. But I thought I would try and just capture it just using my phone. This is the fork that for the second and uh, top synchroniser. And this is what they call the three inch fork for the lighter type synchroniser. And can you see there's quite a step there? There's quite a step there. There isn't a step there. There's a little step there. And can you see that it's worn around the kind of radius of the fork body and there? And when I put this in here, when I put this in here, can you see that there's a lot of lost movement? Okay, so I have, um, I've took this little file and I've tried filing you can see, well maybe you can see, there's a tiny little there's a tiny little nick halfway up that face. It, it does file so it's not rock hard is what I'm trying to say. So what I thought I would do is first of all clean it and then put some MIG weld on this face and that face and that face and that face and then try and get it back to a size there where it will fit in there nice and you know nice and snugly without being too tight because that has to spin all the time remember so it can't be tight but that's 0.375 that is that gap and these are nearly a hundred thou less about 90 thou less. Now what tends to happen with these, people tend to hold them in second like that, pushing it that way. So I think I need to put more on this side. Let's say if I was going, let's say, let's try and work it out. Let's say I need 90 thou, I'd put 60 on this side and 30 on that side. That's just what my gut feeling is telling me. Because you can see there's a big step there. And there's a big step there. So I think I need to put more metal on this side than that side. And that will keep it clear. That will keep it clear of that area there. In other words, that part there would rub on there. But if you can keep this build this up it won't rub on there. Do you think that sounds like a reasonable thing to do? Right I've taken the fork, I've cleaned it and I've ground the edges to give me good clean metal to, um, to weld to. So I'm going to lay some weld on there and I've got a set up in the milling machine that I'll show you in a minute when I get it all set up. Okay, so I'm going to weld that on then. I'm not going to film while I'm welding. So I'll catch you in a little bit. Well, there's the um, fork after a good bit of welding. I imagine there's tons of material on there that I'd need to take off. But, um, you know, as the, the machine is so I'd rather be looking at it than for it. Okay, right. Next setup will be on the milling machine. Actually, Hello, um, right here's the setup in the milling machine. Um, I've just taken a cut on there and um, I've left it 25 thou further this way than it was. This is the third gear side, the top gear side. So I'm going to undo it now 
flip it over up the other way and take the cut on the other side and hopefully bring these into the width that I want. Let's keep my fingers crossed so I've got enough material. Hello, right, so I've been skimming down the other side and I've got this sleeve here, so that is, this is the first cut where that has just slid over there like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take another 15 thou to give it like 15 thou clearance. I think that sounds like a reasonable number. So I'm going to take 10 and then 5, or I'll, I'll take 8 and then 7. So, okay, I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. Just so you can have a little machining shot. That's just taking a cut on that, the one that's closest to us. Okay, so I'll put the... I need to go around to 95. There. Okay, let's turn it off. So there's a sleeve with a bit of nice rattling fit, but not 90 thou clearance like I had. I've been working on this fork, in fact I've finished it now, and I've built it up with weld, and I've machined it down, and I've also done some hand filing, and I've made a new um, sort of rivet bolt it's actually one of these it's a five millimeter allen bolt that I've cut down so I've put that in there uh, I fitted this shaft which came from a different box but looks in better condition and oh I've got to put a, a sailing plug in there but other than that it's done so this goes on the top fits nicely so there's the gear stick in place a gear stick needs a little bit of remedial work but it's not too bad so that's first, like that. That works fine. Let me see the output going round. That's reversed there, I'll do turn the same way. And then this is the bit that I've been working on. There's second. That's all right, no strange noises. So that's second, and that's top. So that is a one to one. So there we are. Not an easy job, and it would have been harder if I hadn't got the milling machine and who knows how long it'll last but with typical of these cars which are like hobby cars you know you, you tend to do a relatively limited mileage plus it, it's also quite easy to take the lid off the gearbox and have a look inside and make sure everything's okay 
and it can be redone if need be or change the fork for another fork so that's a that, anyway that's a job that I think has come out okay um, the other little job I've done today is I've put a new seal in there I ordered these seals there's the part number and there's the company that I got them from at the top it's two inch OD one and three eighths in a diameter and five sixteenths thick and I bought three of them so one of those is in there and I've also ordered a, a washer to replace a washer that I've used at the front there so I will have to actually take this down and change that washer and bring it back up again but you know hey it's a, it's like everything I do when I put it together the first time it's more or less a, a sort of dry run and then I kind of sleep on it and if something is still bothering me after a couple of days I'll, I'll rework it if I've forgotten about it I don't worry about it okay thanks very much then I'll catch you on the next one bye hello hello um look at this I put the video up showing me assembling this and one of my eagle-eyed viewers very kindly wrote to me and said Mark you're gonna have a problem because when you offered the timing cover in the gasket folded back what happened is that the gasket caught on there and folded under and so I thought oh I'll just have a quick look I haven't really come out to do a job and um, not only had it folded back it done it on both sides so it just shows doesn't it how you need to be careful and I think the reason was because I had the pulley in place and I went in like that so there's a little thing to look out for okay I'm going to straighten those out and put it back on hmm yes strange so thank you very much for that and uh, I'll insert the name of the viewer here and I'll also I will insert a little clip of showing you how it what he saw so okay they are just a quickie but just showing that I am about to fix it okay Catch you later. Bye. I've got to get the rear piece to go on there. Now, what you need to do with these is try and minimise the end float on the bearings. So what I might try and do is just put it on without any gasket and just put a, some sealant around here so it'll take out it'll decrease the end float by the thickness of the gasket and I'm going to do the same on the front I've done some careful measurements on the front and it's okay I can do that the other thing that you have to watch with these is the thickness of these um, circlips if you buy a replacement bearing not an original Ford bearing or a old stock replacement bearing from back in the day these circlips can be thinner and that adds to the end float you want to minimize end float to reduce the possibility of the um, of it coming out a second right I've um, retrieved my rear mount 
and I've done some measurements and I'm going to fit it without a gasket so I'm going to use some of this stuff which will squeeze out of the way so I'm just going to put some of this round here if it'll come out okay going to put some of this red rubber grease on this piece here to um, well I don't know why actually but I think I might make it sort of slip together nice and easy I <coughs> pardon me I struggled when I was trying to assemble this and what I found was it's easier to insert those things in there one by one. So that's my little tip. So let me just see what I need to do here. Well, that's easy, isn't it? Not much to that. Okay. That slipped together nice, actually, with that red rubber grease in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put three bolts in, no washers, give it a wobble about to kind of centre it up. And what I'll do then, I'll go and clean the bolts. But what I want to do now, I want to get this tightened up so that that stuff can set. That's the rear mount in place. This is the one that I've had in, in the frame, you know, when I've been mucking up the back axle. So I'll sort out six bolts. Okay. Then I can put the UJ on. Then I can put this piece on. There's a slight bit of damage on this one here, but it's, it's actually quite hard to... Um, it's like case hardened, quite hard to file, but it, it does go on. Okay. I don't normally use that sort of stuff, but <clears throat> because I want to try and reduce the backlash, I, w I wanted to take away the thickness of the gasket which will clamp the bearing tighter Might as well do the front now. I was using those calipers to measure the depths of the cuts in the in the in the um, covers and the height of the um, you know this uh, clip and things like that. This had actually previously been assembled up with some sort of sealant on it. If it wasn't for this end play business, I'd just use the gaskets like normal.
imagine that'll splurge into the you know cover, fill the gaps up with when it splurges out okay that's all looking fine put a bit of grease in the sail you have to put the sail over the spline part That's torqued up. I should have done like a click noise, shouldn't I? Do this end as well. Right. This is the UJ I'm going to use. It's all been washed, so it's bone dry. Um, I can't detect any rotational play or tiny bit that way fore and aft but you will always have play like that in these Ford. Don't think that that means it's worn out that means everything's fine um, and the reason for that is so that if there's the slightest misalignment between the gearbox and the shaft it can be taken up in the joint the joint can do that to a certain extent so that's started it's gone a little bit tight I think that's the correct bolt it's a fine threaded bolt but it's a th thick washer with a slight curve to it okay th there's the there's another bolt which does look the same as that one this one looks slightly better condition and this is the washer the problem with this washer is it's supposed to be domed to a certain extent and it isn't it's kind of been flattened out so I'm just thinking should I try and use the press to um, try and put a bit of dome back in it there you go that's how it's supposed to look with a little curve to it like that because the torque of this bolt shouldn't be enough to squash that flat okay so this washer goes in there I don't think you can put this in maybe you can yeah you can put it in like that but what you do then you, you come down the end with a socket to get it going it might need to be a, not not one of these type of sockets we can come down there like that again give it a rattle about oh it's Martin it's nowhere near is it it's nowhere near at the moment of course it isn't what I wanted to do is to use the washer to kind of tap the UJ down so the washer's there I'm just going to tap it down I might need to put it down horizontal so I can kind of put it in like that so there's the washer trying to fall out there's the thing ah now what did I say might need a, a shallow socket because you can't push the bolt on with this sort of socket come on there we go okay that's screwing in there can you see how it isn't turning because I've got it in second and first at the same time okay that looks okay 
uh, I will go and find out what the torque is. It'll be about 35, 40 foot pounds, something like that. Okay, I can't find a, a number for it, so I'm just going to use 35. There we go, 35. Now I'm not going to fit the, um, that's all right, look everything moves nice and freely. I'm not going to fit the lid tight because I'll probably take it off when it's in the car because sometimes it's useful to be able to get in here, for instance, to be able to turn, turn the um, input shaft. This is the other thing that needs doing. It's the uh, clutch release fork. There's not much to it really. This has all been cleaned up. Now I've got a special bolt that goes in here. Instead of using one of those pins, I've got a bolt. I salvaged this bolt from a French um, transmission. It was used in this application and it's, it's modified slightly there. Don't tell anyone, but it's metric. And here's the here's the um, release bearing. This is a new one. After having that noise on my truck, I thought I'll put a new one on instead of just trying to use the old one. I took the old one off, and I did nothing more than I, I took that um, hammer that I, the, with a soft face, and I just give it a couple of taps there, holding it in my hand like that, with my finger underneath, and it, it just went through. And this one just went on just as easily. So uh, that goes on there like that. And then you have a spring that you put between there and there. Now this spring is a little bit stretched. This spring has become stretched. So I'll have a look and try and find a better one because you can't really unstretch them. There's one that hasn't been stretched but it's a bit dirty. Let me go and see if I can clean it quickly. Oh there we go, nice and easy actually, easier than I thought. It is in, yep that's in. I'm not sure if you're supposed to put some sort of lube on here. I'll, I'll look that up and see. Maybe some copper grease or something. So there we are. That's a bit tight to turn, but it's it's brand new. Imagine that'll ease up with a you know after it's run a bit. So there we are then. A 39 in inverted commas Ford transmission. This one, the casing is from a 52 F1 and the gears are from my white 41 Ford pickup. So there you go. Looks all right, doesn't it? Don't look too bad. So that gearbox 
is ready to be bolted to that engine and they can both go into that chassis over there okay thank you very much for joining me in the garage then i'll catch you on the next one bye hello look on my table is a chisel typical chisel this one's actually bent but that's not anything to do with what i'm going to talk about i've just made a tool from one of these and i'll show you it and you can guess what it's for try and guess what it's for here it is there's the tool Um, the blade, as you can see, is relatively thin and relatively parallel, which helps. So, I'll give you a clue. There's two working edges. This edge is a working edge, and this edge is a working edge. And I'll show you what it's for. I'll just swap. Okay, so... Here is a early Ford track. Oh, it's a drag link actually this one. Now I'm not going to take this out because I haven't got many of these split pins so I don't want to change this. But this tool, the idea is that you can go in like that. That will go in there and you can turn it to turn it. If it's tight you can use the side piece instead of the end piece. And you can go in there like that get it in there and then you've got the length of the handle that you can use as a lever you know to wind it and then you can do it like that or you can hold this with your hand there and put a pair of um, you know like a crescent wrench or something on there or you could put something on there this is actually um, octagonal rather than hexagon so but you've got plenty of opportunity there to tackle these things here because this is much bigger than a normal screwdriver so you can go in with that wind them in and out adjust them use that end for extra extra torque and basically again once again something from nothing just made from a broken chisel it was already broken it just came in a bucket of tools or a book so there's one of them turned into one of them something to put in the drawer and just get it out next time I need to do anything to do with um, tie rods or drag links okay thank you very much cheers then something for nothing bye Hello, righto. I thought I would try and. I thought I, I might as well try and just finalise this by. I'll, I'll put a bit of oil on there just to lubricate it. I want to bolt this on. What I need to do is kind of slather that in um, special grease. What I think I'll do, I think I'll put a bit of Hylomar on here. I've just had an idea actually, I might do it up on end, that might help. Yeah, let's do it up on end. Yeah, it's getting heavy this is. This is Fuchs Renolit EP00. That's the name of the company there. Okay, this is the grease. This is going to be messy. 
nothing to do except just go for it. Just let that go down the middle. Okay, that'll do. That'll do. So I'll put some Hylomar on here. This is just an attempt to try and stop everything from leaking so badly. Normally you get some sort of leaks, but I've never achieved one yet that doesn't drip. But you might as well give it the best, you know, give it the best shot you can. So here's, here's the thing. There's a slight bit of damage on this one thing. There we go. Okay. Now because the because the studs only have thread so far down, I'm going to put these washers on here temporarily so that I can just put a nut on there to hold it on. I might as well just put the nuts on there to hold it on and then I won't lose them because I made special nuts. So I'll just put the nuts on. These are the special nuts that I made. See that spanner look, drop forged India. That's one of my, that was from my first set of spanners that I bought when I was about 16 or 17. And I bent that in a scrapyard trying to undo the bottom track control arm on a Ford console Capri. <laughs> Still got it. Okay, good. So that'll do for now then. That's a primary. What I can do, I can, when it, when I come to fit this, just before I fit it, I can ladle a bit more in there. And um, it's got a grease fitting underneath, hasn't it, that I can squirt some in. So I'm going to call that good now. This is what I reckon to be the locally available equivalent to the John Deere corn head grease. I'm going to leave that up on end so that that just kind of stays in there. It'll be interesting to see if it's all run out of these holes in the morning. Thanks a lot then, another step closer. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!